Hey guys, Kendall Bonner here with Connect with Kendall. And I have another friend who I am so honored and excited to interview today and share his knowledge, his story, you know, his insights, his wisdom, um, some of the new cool things he's working on that I think are great. His name is Grant Wise. He is someone that you know, I've heard of and I followed from afar. Really how I came to Grant was through his company. I was starting my team and I was researching tools and things that I was like, these are things I'm going to use to grow my business. And so I did homework, I did research, and I was just like, this is it. This is a really cool thing. I could see the value in it. And so that is how I came to know Grant Wise and his company, Whitley. So thank you, Grant, for being on uh, the call with me today. I really appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to having some fun with these topics. No, thank you again for having me. I'm grateful. Tell us like a little bit about the journey and the history of Whitley. Let's explain to people really quick mm -hmm. what it is, because I think like it's a good kind of level set foundational piece for people yeah. to understand what we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. So Whitley, the history of Whitley. Um, I got started in the real estate space in 2014, late 2014, early 2015. And what I got started doing was teaching real estate agents how to do Facebook ads. I started very small, come off the back of like a couple of years actually in the industry. And um, it was really cool experience because the first client I ever had sold 48 houses the first 12 months that we worked together, all from one single Facebook ad. It's pretty epic. And so I took that little bitty course that I had, it was like a four week course and turned it into a legitimate it was like eight to 12 module course and built a really big training company really fast because I was also really good at getting clients for Facebook ads. And um, I think it was 2016, 2017, I started asking myself some questions, man, couldn't we just figure out a way to do this for people? Cause a lot of agents struggled with the tech back in the day to run Facebook ads. They didn't have lead formats. You had to build a landing page and then you had to build an email automation sequence. And then you had to, build all of these different things just so that you could run the Facebook ads and have a lot of success. Cause it's not enough just to run the ad and get the lead. You've got to have the systems on the back end that can help you convert it. And so I started asking that question, like, couldn't we just do this for people? I did not want to build a marketing agency. And to this day, I, I do not, cause it's a very heavy business. It requires a lot of people. There's a lot of stuff that I just really don't want to deal with. And somebody introduced me to the idea of um, SaaS, which is the software as a service. I was like, that's it. We could build a software that could just do these ads for people. And that's how Whitley came about back in 2017. We launched the company and uh, just in the last couple of months have released the third iteration of our platform. And Whitley today is the client acquisition system that real estate agents use to generate new clients every single month in their business at no cost to them, which is you know really exciting because we're able to help people generate new, new, new leads, do remarketing, help them convert. And we have ways that we can help them do it all and offset all their costs, which is in a time like this, uh, I think never more, uh, you know, both important and effective because people are struggling to generate new customers in this environment. And uh, our platform helps them, you know, generate new opportunities they need to grow their business, but does so in a way that does not negatively impact their bank account, which is good. And especially, you know, we're recording this at uh, fourth mm -hmm. quarter, 2023. Um, I still think regardless of the timeline of this recording, ideas like this are evergreen and that, mm -hmm. you know, agents are always going to be concerned with budget. Agents are always going to be concerned yeah. with overhead expenses, revenue. And what I love about what you are building, which, you know, honestly, I feel like there's even more stuff for us to talk about besides this, but I will say this on this point is that the beautiful thing of what you're building and what you have built is that it can offset the expense the real a realtor has or an agent has on their marketing budget, but it also can create revenue, which is yeah. like makes it okay. Now now we're really what is it um, cooking with gas as my husband cooking with, yeah. <laughs> cooking with gas now, right? Like um, so, I think that's really neat. But before we get into that, you know, you talked originally about or getting business from social media. Let's like back up to that piece. Cause I think like there's so much to say about that and to kind of break down for an agent um, to be thinking about, you know, in my experience, I've seen a lot of agents do a couple of things well and a couple of things in my opinion, really wrong. Well, 
um, agents are posting to their social media, but they don't actually know how to grow their accounts, right? I always say it's like really great for you to have this great content, but if you're not getting eyeballs on your content, what's the point, right? I mean, you're not going to generate business that way. Mm-hmm. I also talk to people a lot about how there's like two groups of people, people you know and people you don't know. And not only do I ask them which one's bigger, which is an obvious answer, the people they don't know, but I ask them where they should be prospecting and getting business from. And everyone always chooses. And I'm like, it's both, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like you need to be getting business from people you know and people you don't know. And the beautiful yeah. thing about social media is you can do that, right? You can- yeah. Maybe people you know and engage with people you don't know. So what are some of the top tips, tricks, ideas? What are you seeing that people are, where people are missing opportunity on the social media side with like how they're posting, how they're doing it? What are some of your ideas and tips on that? I would say that my expertise probably falls more within the the realm of paid advertising. So I never have ever professed to be like an organic content expert. Um, What I would say is probably one of the things that I see people make the mistakes the most, whether it's with paid advertising or with content, is probably not really understanding who they're marketing to and what they want. There's a saying that I have that all of the talks that I give is the person that works with everyone works with no one. And in real estate, you have a lot of generalists and generalists become commodities. And you know that you're a commodity when everybody negotiates your commission. So if you're in meetings with people all the time, would you do this for a thousand bucks or could you give me a break on the commission? I think it's where you've got to recognize like, okay, you're a commodity to this person. Mm -hmm. What they think is they can just go get any other realtor and that that other realtor is going to help them sell their property or buy a property and they're going to do it at a discount. And I think a lot of agents get really upset with this, uh, by this, but Don't really look in the mirror and say, why is this happening? What am I doing? What am I not doing that is leading to these types of conversations? So when you're creating content, what I always like to tell people is there's a difference between being a generalist and a specialist. And I usually equate it to the medical field. General practitioners, right? They know more about the body than anybody else. They work, unfortunately, typically longer hours than anybody else. They uh, get paid less than everybody else. And they have really hard jobs. Um, whereas like a heart surgeon or a plastic surgeon knows this much about the body, but they know this much about that. I've studied fewer parts of the body yet. I get paid astronomically more money than most general practitioners probably work a little bit less, have a better lifestyle. And and I always like to draw those points. Like if you're a real estate agent and you're trying to be a generalist, well, what's going to happen is you're just going to kind of blend in with the crowd. Nobody's gonna be able to really tell what's special or unique about you. And then this really negatively impacts your ability to create content. People say all the time, what should I create my content about? And I always like to highlight that you're asking the wrong question. Who should I create my content for is a better question to ask. Because if I know that I'm going to create content for doctors that like living on golf courses, it makes it really easy to go out there and create a piece of social media content that helps a doctor who wants to live on a golf course or that you know, entertains doctors that are living on golf course. It makes it so easy for me to be able to create content. I was on uh, with, I think a lady like six weeks ago. I'm struggling to create videos. I just don't know what to talk about. And I'm like, well, who do you like to work with? And she's like, oh, I really love working with people that are relocating. She, she lives in California. She's like, everybody's moving out of my town. And so she's like, I've actually kind of found a little bit of a niche where I just focus on the people that are moving out of the town. I'm like, well, then all of your content needs to be about how to relocate out of your town, the reasons to do it, how to do it, the process of doing it. And she was like this revelation, like, oh yeah, of course, that makes so much sense. Tension's the currency of sales. And if you're not getting the currency of sales, and if you're not getting attention from the right people that you actually want to do business with, it's going to negatively impact your results. So knowing who you are marketing to will answer the what to do I say question that all of these people have when it comes to creating content. And then knowing what those people want. This is the biggest mistake that I see in advertising. So there's a great book out there. It's called Breakthrough Advertising. It's written by a man named Eugene Schwartz. It's a very old book on advertising. And it's about a $500 book on advertising. But in Eugene's Eugene's book, he synthesizes that there's really only two things that we can leverage in advertising, desire or need. And when you break that down, there's really only two things that you can give people in real estate, homes to look at and their value. I desire property, I need to sell, right? 
or I need to buy one of these two. And so I don't think that we should be reinventing the wheel. And that's what a lot of people try to do. They try to build brands with no brand money in the bank account and wonder why they're not getting results. They try to run advertising, giving out, you know, pencils to people that are trying to buy houses. They just, there's a lot of mismatch because mm-hmm. people don't get it. Like they don't fully understand it. And so those are some of the top mistakes that I see agents making today. They don't know who they're talking to and they don't know what to give them. And it's, you know, creates a big problem. I feel like we should talk more because every time you speak, I'm writing notes because I'm learning from you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a student, period, right? Like I've always um, called myself a student. I'm writing notes about things that you're saying, books. I love that. But, um, you know, it's funny you, you brought up the budget thing as it relates to real estate professionals. You know, I've said this as a broker, agents, you know, we have this false sense of entrepreneurship and being business owners when we become real estate professionals. But I find, you know, I believe like a book, a business requires a couple of things, a book of business, right? Like, um, so sphere or lead source or something, um, a brand and a budget. And so many agents come into this business with no budget. And it's like, how, how do you expect to open a business with no money um, or to mm-hmm. invest any without investing money into your business? Right. So mm-hmm. um, that's my little soapbox there. So if you're listening to this and you're a realtor with no budget, you need to work on that. that that's an important piece of owning a business. So let's talk a little bit more about what, you know, social media ads. Now, I want to ask you one question that you can level set this. I have heard, I first of all, I love and hate when people say, well, are there good leads or bad leads? right? When you're a team leader or, you know, you're talking about lead sources, everyone wants the good leads versus the bad leads. Help this audience understand why that's the wrong question. I don't know that there are bad leads. And certainly if you get like a lead, that's like fu at fu.com, it's probably not a legitimate lead because you can't contact them. Right. But I would say that there's leads that are ready to buy now and there's leads that aren't. And that's the disconnect. People people want the leads that are ready to buy right now, but they're not building the infrastructure to support the leads that aren't. Because what advertising allows you to do today is it allows you to get business that's like you're going to be ready to transact in the next 90 days, but it also allows you to build a gigantic pipeline for the future when you're adding contacts to your database. And I think that there's just a, you probably like these two points correlate because people come into this business and they have no money to start a business. Right. And that makes you like an employee doesn't make you a business owner. And I think what a lot of agents don't do is they don't go work on a team and actually learn the business from people that are actually doing a lot of business. And then they try to spend what little money that they have to generate leads, create opportunities. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it puts a lot of people in a position of selling based off what's in their pocketbook. They obsess over transactions because they need money. And like, it it doesn't really set you up for success long-term. And so when you're generating leads, I think you've got to recognize that the industry average for our online lead conversion today is 0.8%. I think that number has gone down because of the state of the industry. But what that means is you got to get a hundred leads from whatever source it is that you want to get these leads from. And you likely will have a transaction. And what agents get burnt out on is weeding through the 99 to find the one that's going to be ready to do business. So they just give up. And if you'll shift your perspective, I think you'll have a lot more success because you've got to recognize like advertising will help you build a business for today, meaning you'll find people that are ready to buy, sell today, but it also is helping you build this ginormous pipeline for the future. Because if we're only converting one to 3% of the leads we generate in the first 90 days, what are we going to do with the 97 leads over the course of the next year? Right. I did a study on a business in Canada, one of our mutual friends, and they do over 2000 transactions a year. And I think this statistic always blows agents' minds, but I always like bringing it up because what I looked at is of the 2000 transactions that were done, what percentage came from where? Well, 56% of the business came from the sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Cool. The other four sources were Facebook advertising, SEO, and PPC. Mm -hmm. So mainly digital sources. But here's the statistic that I like to point out to people. We looked at the average time to close on all sources. Sphere of influence, it was 343 days. SEO and PPC were 353 days. 
That's only a 10 day difference. Yeah. And then Facebook was 363 days. And so these are only, this is only a three week span of differentiation. Meaning yeah. even if you know somebody, I know you, you're in my sphere of influence and you want to buy a house from the time you go into my CRM, we start the process to the time you actually close. It's only a three week difference between SEO, PPC and Facebook. On This is not a business doing little transactions. This is 2000 units in one year. So I step into organizations, teams, brokerages as a fractional chief marketing officer. And the first thing that I go grab is the data. Let's look at the data. And I'm in these teams and it's like Zillow leads, time to transact, three months. Facebook, three months. Wait a second. I thought everybody says it takes a year to close a deal from Facebook. SEO, PPC, three months. All of these sources are actually relatively the same. They're not that much different. What's different about every single agent, team leader, or broker owner that I get to work with is the systems that they've got set up to support the business long term. What most people do is they generate leads. They call the lead one time. They're not ready to go, and they're just burning through contacts and money trying to get to the gold, where if you would just build a CRM, set up a sales process, have a lead management policy, like enforce the standards that you're you know, pushing out into your organization, you would be able, you would be mind blown how profitable your business would be even today. I don't care what the market's doing. There are, if you go look at the MLS data, you're going to find there are still hundreds of homes a month that are selling in your market, wherever you live, wherever you're listening to this from. So the market's really irrelevant. It's the lack of attention. There's not enough people that know, like, and trust you because uh, there's homes selling every single day. It's yeah. just not being done with you. And so I think if you'll like look in the mirror, again, go back and look in the mirror. What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? This isn't a thing that people are getting wrong because they're just generating leads, expecting that that's going to turn into money. And it's not the reality of the business. It's not the nature of real estate. It's not the nature of the sales cycle that exists in real estate. And it doesn't matter where the lead comes from. Your time to transact is not going to be that much different. It's the systems and processes that people put in place. that's the big differentiator. I want to get into that. But before I ask the question, another point I want to make is that, you know, the best way to compete is not to compete, right? Mm -hmm. And agents, how they end up, you know, a lot of agents believe this is a very competitive business and they're right when you're looking for the today business. For example, you post in Facebook, Hey, I'm looking to buy or sell a house. Like you're going to have 50 realtor recommendations. <laughs> and so it becomes really hard to get that customer's attention because you're competing with 50 plus other agents, like immediately yeah. going after them. But then if you met that person a year before they were like ready to transact and you've been, because they happen to be going online, doing their homework, doing their research, clicked on an ad, what have you. Um, and now you're building relationship with them, mm -hmm. right? Over the course of time, when that time comes, when they finally are ready to transact, they're not going to go to Facebook and ask for a referral. They're just going to call you, right? right. Um, and so let's talk about that. Like, what do you think it should look like in a little bit more detail? Cause I know just real high level, you just said it, but like, what are some like practical tips and strategies that you think people should be implementing from the time the lead comes in till the time, you know, when that person is down the funnel, right. And ready to take action. There's a few things. Um, one really simple one is have a CRM. So like yeah. have a place where you manage these contacts, you'd be mind blown how many people don't have a CRM that they use. They have two or three that they're paying for, but like they don't have one that they're actually using. Right. Um, and then second is have a predefined sales process. So when those leads come in, not enough people take the time to sit down and map out the customer journey. What are they going to get from you day one? Is it an email? Is it a text? Is it a call? What are they going to get from you day two, three, seven, 14, 30, like Map out the sales process and and this. don't generate leads and then try to figure out your sales process. Figure out your sales process. We're in an industry where everybody gives away all of their secrets. So this, <laughs> like nobody has to guess here. You don't have to make this up or go on the fly. You go into like the follow-up boss community as an example, and everybody's giving away their sales processes. Like turnkey, mm -hmm. step by step, here's what you do. Here's the playbook. And so I would say just like copy what the most successful people in the industry are doing. They're all giving away their secrets. So use them, have that predefined sales process built out, have the automations built out, have the sales process, the sales path, the reminders, whatever it is that's going to be your sales process, have it defined. 
And then when it's time for you to do those things, follow up, do the work that's required. Like work works. If you pick up the phone and talk to people, you're going to make money. It is proven. (laughs) There's nothing more proven in real estate than that specifically, that if you pick up the phone and talk to people, you will make money. What lead generation does is it gives you warmer people to talk to. Like cold calling is no fun. I, I don't recommend it. I don't like it. I, I know it works if you're really good at it. I don't do it because it's not fun, uh, which is why I like to lead generate. Because if somebody sees an ad of mine that opt in for something, when I call them, there's a warmer interaction that takes place. But have a CRM, have a sales process. And today it's really difficult. What, what we recognize like five or six years ago is people stopped answering the phone. Um, it used to be eight to 12 touches to get somebody to convert. Now it's like, 18 touches to get somebody to actually even just respond to you because as a society we've gotten smarter did you all know that the average lead is shared with nine different realtors so yeah they're not going to take every single call that they get and so what i found that worked the the best for me and all of my clients is something that we call dynamic video remarketing Mm -hmm. um you are the face of your company like you're the face of your brand the face of your business and what a lot of people are doing is they're trying to automate themselves out of the sales process and it's, it's going the opposite direction. So what I like to tell my clients to do is pull out the phone, create a few videos that educate and inform that help prospects build a relationship with you and then set up remarketing campaigns so that when leads come into the business, now everywhere they go on the internet, they're seeing you, they're developing a relationship with you, which what happens is it, they have a high propensity towards answering the phone responding to the text, open the emails, do this, track your numbers beforehand. Most people don't, but track your numbers beforehand and then track your numbers after. And you'll notice an increase in all of the ways your customers engage with you, phone, text, email, you'll see your engagement rates go up. And if you engage with more people, you set more appointments. If you go on more appointments, you sell more real estate. So that's probably my greatest hack is video remarketing because it allows you to instantaneously begin to develop a relationship with somebody as soon as they become a lead of yours And that's the thing that solved our conversion problem. So we see our clients convert typically 150% better than the industry average. And remarketing is really the only thing that we can point to that's the big differentiator. And that's because you, as the agent, team leader, broker, owner, you're the differentiator. If it's the Kendall Bonner team, just as an example, and Kendall Bonner decides she doesn't want to participate in creating content or the sales process or follow-up or any of these things, you're going to struggle greatly to convert leads. But if it's the Kendall Bonner team and boom, every time I go back to Facebook now, I'm seeing a video from Kendall Bonner because she's targeting me with ads. I'm getting emails from her. I'm getting texts from her. I'm getting phone calls from her team. Uh, You're going to have a much higher success rate of converting leads because you've not removed yourself from the process. Every business has, every has an attractive character, which is the person that is the brand, like the personification of the brand. If I say Tesla, most people think of Elon Musk, like instantly. He's the personification of Tesla. He's not the reason, or he's the reason people are buying Tesla, but he's not the one that's making the cars. He's got people in the manufacturing facility that are doing it. Real estate agents just have to come to terms with this idea that you're going to be the reason that people will do business with you. It doesn't mean you have to be the one showing all the houses and doing all the things. It just means that you've got to be out there talking to your audience every single day. So uh, th- that would be the third and I think most critical component that I've seen that solves because it's it's not something that I can argue. Like people are making calls today and nobody's answering the phone. That's real. Right. People are sending texts and nobody's responding. People are sending emails and nobody's responding. Like that's real. You can't ignore it. It's a, it's a critical component here. But what remarketing again allows us to do is instantaneously start to develop a relationship with somebody so that they will answer the phone when we call because they've been seeing us every single day for the last three months while we're trying to make a decision on buying houses. Prospects are getting smarter. They're waiting to talk to salespeople longer. And I think if you just recognize that and instead of trying to fight it, you lean into it. You'll be amazed at what happens. I I lead trainings all the time. And I I always like asking people this question because I think it's so funny. But it's like, you like salespeople. And almost every realtor I've ever interacted with is like, no, I hate salespeople. Why? Why don't you like them? Well, because they're always calling you. Uh, When when you get on the phone, they're trying to pressure you. They, 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 They typically don't care about what I want. And what I always like to do is like hold up a mirror. Like, 
you realize you're describing yourself. Right. You hate it when people do this stuff to you, but you do it to everybody oh. and wonder why it doesn't work. Definitely. Uh, so crazy. Yeah. And I mean, a couple of takeaways for me first, early on, you talked about process, right? And it reminds me of, and my husband and I have been saying that to ourselves lately too. It's like, sometimes you got to slow down to speed up, right? Like sometimes you got to slow down, build out the process. You know, my husband and I have called ourselves, you know, we're building the plane while falling off the cliff, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that. And I'm like, man, that really sucks for those passengers who are on that ride with me, but hold on, don't worry, I'm going to get there. Yeah. And, you know, also too, like, describing that sales process as, you know, I, I call it, it's like everyone needs a map. You know, we need GPS, we need maps to get from one place to the other. So build your map, which is your marketing action plan. Like mm -hmm. how are you going to follow up with the leads that you generate? What are you going to do both before the transaction, during the transaction and after the transaction, right? I want to wrap this call up and I want to wrap it up by talking about um, your company, Whitley. First of all, where can people go? What's the best link? to go to, to get demos, learn more, to do business with your company? Where can people go? Yeah, you can go to usewitly.com. Really simple, usewitly, W-I-T-L-Y.com. Whitley today, again, is a client acquisition system that agents use to generate new clients every single month in their business at no cost to them. So when somebody uses our platform, they're going to be able to use it to run Facebook ads, to generate leads. They're going to be able to do remarketing. We have AI follow-up. 90 of them are not going to be ready to do business with you right now. So how do we like weed out the 90 to get to the 10? That's my favorite use case for AI. It's not to get them to do all of my closing work for me. It's to get them to weed out all the bad leads so that I, what, what they describe as bad leads so that I could follow up with the 10 that are like going to be more ready to transact in, in a relatively short time frame. And um, we, we offer all of those services to our clients. And then as well, we have something called lead sharing, which is a way that agents can do all of this stuff and offset their expenses. So through our lead sharing program, we, we help real estate agents connect with other uh, relevant third parties that would be interested in essentially buying their leads. And it, it helps the agent completely offset all of their expenses. So you know if an agent's spending $1,000 a month to generate new leads in the business, you know, in a traditional, you know, setup, they would have to spend that money for months of years before they get the return with Whitley and Whitley lead sharing, we can actually get them all that thousand dollars back in their business every month. So they get the leads and they don't have to take the financial risk to generate the leads. And we're finding that it's helping our clients accelerate their growth because they can then in turn buy more leads. They can invest in good CRMs. They can get the right sales processes in place. And so those are the few things that we offer people. You know, um, I just envision like this wheel of like, you're using, it's almost like using the same thousand dollars every single month. You're just mm -hmm. taking thousand dollars, put in your business, you get it back, you put it in your business, get it back, put it, but at, yeah. but at the end of the year, instead of spending 12,000, you spent a thousand, hypothetically, the very first thousand you, you spent, mm -hmm. right. That hopefully you're getting back. But on top of that, you've now received $12,000 worth of leads across yes. the year right exactly. which I think is really fascinating like like mind-blown concept so one other question real quick that I, I thought of while you were answering that was what would you say is the minimum amount all in you would recommend an agent to go in on something like this like that you would say do not go below this number otherwise you're wasting your time I think it's a really good question um I would say you're going to be at minimum between $600 to $1,000 a month to get started. That's mm -hmm. to start a relationship with somebody like me, plus your advertising expenses, uh, plus your CRM. Most CRMs are pretty inexpensive these days. That's going to get you a start. It's going to get you to a place where you could probably start to generate a, a client a month or a client every four to six weeks. Um, and then you can start reinvesting as you you know, have more success. Like that's going to get you to a place where you can start to generate a client every, you know, 30 to 45 days. And then you can just keep increasing your spend as your cash flow allows, get to a place where you're selling a house a month, house a week, whatever the goals are. Um, but, you know, a minimum 600 to to $1,000 would be like bare bones. If you can't do something like that, you really aren't, you know, in a position where you can make the investments you need to make in your business. And then is there... 
too much money to spend. That's you know, something. there's always the law of diminishing returns. I just haven't found it yet. Okay. Because agents, you know, this, this industry is not very good at looking at its numbers. What Everything that we've talked about today is it's direct marketing. It's performance-based marketing. It's what I call growth marketing. Like, it's a different way to grow your business. Now, we're all pretty accustomed to this. Over the course of the last decade since I've been doing this, the industry has really like caught up to what this is, buying leads, following up, converting, all that other stuff. But what they're not really that great at doing just yet is tracking all of this, understanding what their cost to convert is, understanding what you know their acquisitional costs, conversion rates, appointment rates, you know, cost per lead. They're just not really that good at tracking all of this stuff just yet. And when I step into companies, like I was consulting a team a couple of months ago, I wrote about this a couple of days ago. I helped them find $40,000 a month since they were spending in advertising. It was just dead money. It wasn't, it was producing enough where they were just losing a little bit. I'm like, you could take this $40,000 and you could put 10 of it into this other source and it will produce a million dollars in GCI the next 12 months. And then you can put the other 30 back in your bank account because you don't need to spend it. And it's, it's people just aren't looking at that stuff to know, like, how do, where do I go? How do I spend? How, like, how, how's my business performing? Because we've got these new, like, performance-based ways that we grow our business, but we're, most uh, agents and team leaders are doing it with traditional staff. Like, they're building teams that know how to do direct mail and that do content and that do print. And what I find is a lot of teams are spending a fortune buying leads, but they don't actually have anybody in the organization that understands how all of it works. And so it's, 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 I think, such an interesting paradigm for people. I've not met a point of diminishing returns yet, but that's mainly because most teams just say, all right, let's just spend 10 grand a month or let's spend 20 grand a month. And I'm like, yeah, but how about we install a formula so that you go from spending 2,000 a month to spending 200,000 a month but you're only doing that because it, you've got predictable growth. Like, you know what your cost to convert is, you know, all of the numbers inside of the business. And so I, I don't know that I've seen somebody yet that is spending too much because most just really aren't tracking it to know. Well, Grant, once again, I'm so grateful, so honored, so privileged, one, to call you friend, two, to um, be able to interview you today and everything you've just taught our audience, you know, and, and taught myself, mm -hmm. you know, the last 30 minutes or so. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I value and appreciate you. And, um, to remind all of our guests and all of our listeners and watchers, if you want to work with Whitley, you go to use U S E Whitley, W I T L Y.com. And you can schedule your demo and, um, you know, learn more and see how this particular product and tool can help you in your business and help you grow. All right. Thank you so much, Grant. And thank you to our audience. Thank you.